connected by purpose, driven by passion. This is Children's Healthcare Canada's Spark Live webinar series. Children's Healthcare Canada would like to thank the following Keystone funding partners for their ongoing contributions that support all of our programs and activities. The Stollery Children's Hospital Foundation, BC Children's Hospital Foundation, the Children's Hospital at London Health Sciences Centre, the Alberta Children's Hospital Foundation, the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, and Holland Blurview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital. We would also like to thank the organizations that provide funding for our knowledge translation activities, which includes this Spark Live webinar series, the Spark Conversations blog, and the Knowledge Exchange Network. To learn more about Children's Healthcare Canada, you can go to our website, follow us on Twitter or Facebook, or you can sign up for our weekly Spark newsletter at childrenshealthcarecanada.ca slash email, where you will learn about upcoming events, read the latest posts from our blog, and other exciting news and events from across the child and youth healthcare community. Welcome to Children's Healthcare Canada's Spark Live webinar series. I'm Paula Robeson, your host for the next hour. Spark Live is where we gather each Wednesday to curate, convene, and showcase innovation from across the child and youth healthcare community with our goal to spark conversation, ideas, and action. Since we're live, I want to remind everyone that while we don't take questions over the line, you have the opportunity to type your questions into the question box at any time. I'll check for questions throughout the session, so please don't feel you need to wait until the end before you start typing questions. Go ahead and put them in as you think of them. I'd also like to let you all know about an event Children's Healthcare Canada is hosting in partnership with Alberta Children's Hospital and Alberta Health Services being held in Calgary on April 22nd. This specialized event, All In, Creating Synergy in Pediatric Complex Care in Canada, will welcome over 200 administrators, frontline clinicians, patients and families. And the focus will be to showcase and share practices that we know are working to help support children with complex health care needs and their families. And registration is now open. Today is Pink Shirt Day, which aims to raise awareness about bullying and the importance of kindness and inclusion. So it's quite fitting that we're joined today by colleagues from Holland Bloorview's Kids Rehabilitation Hospital to bring you Dear Everybody, it's time to end disability stigma for young Canadians with disabilities. Paul and Bloorview Rehabilitation Hospital, Kids Rehabilitation Hospital is Children's preeminent Children's Hospital is Canada's preeminent Children's Rehabilitation Hospital and a global leader in childhood disability research. Folks at Children at Hall and Bloorview have developed, in partnership with clients and families, the Dear Everybody public awareness campaign to eliminate disability stigma and promote inclusion in many areas of life, including schools in the community. So I'm delighted to welcome our speakers today. Olivia Olineski is the Senior Communications Associate at Hall and Bloorview, where she leads internal communications, government relations, and issues management. And Olivia was the key driver in developing the Dear Everybody Outreach Program, which brings disability awareness and inclusion to schools and community groups across the city of Toronto. Paulina Cosavera is a, a, the outreach coordinator at Holland Bloorview and responsible for creating and executing a plan to bring lived experience of disability to the community as a means of engagement. For those of you already on Twitter, please tag us at Children's Health at Child Health Can and at HB Kids Hospital for any webinar related tweets and go ahead and tweet away. So it's my pleasure now to pass the mic over to Olivia. Uh, thank you Paula for the warm introduction. Um, my name is Olivia Olesinski, as you mentioned. I'm the Senior Communications Associate at Holland Bloorview. Um, and we're really excited to be here today to talk about our Dear Everybody campaign. Um, as you mentioned, Paula, it certainly is no coincidence that we're here on Picture Day, a day to raise awareness around uh, around bullying for children. Uh, so we know in Canada that one in four children are affected by bullying, and this is certainly um, amplified for kids with disabilities, and that's one of the issues that we're trying to address in our Dear Everybody campaign. Um, I'm just going to pass it over now to my colleague, Paulina, to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Paulina and I'm the Outreach Coordinator uh, here at Holland Bloorview. So today we're going to talk about uh, some of the objectives. So we're going to look at what disability stigma is, some of the misconceptions about disability that cause stigma and ultimately its impact. We're also going to explore 
how we are addressing social and health inequities caused by stigma through our hospital's public awareness campaign, Dear Everybody. And of course, we're going to provide action items to support social inclusion of children and youth with disabilities in all areas of life. And uh, before we jump into the, uh, meat of the meat of our presentation, I'd just like to provide an overview of Holland Bloorview for anyone on the line who's listening today who might be less familiar with what we do. Um, so Holland Bloorview is Canada's only hospital dedicated to both inpatient and outpatient care for, ch for children with disabilities, medical complexity, um, and those who require rehabilitation after illness or experiencing trauma. Um, in addition to the care that we provide, we do offer a number of programs and services to give a holistic um, approach to care that includes uh, programs and services of recreation, life skills, and also a number of employment opportunities for kids and youth with disabilities who are preparing to enter, um, you know, as they get older and they're preparing, they're preparing to enter the workforce. Uh, we are teaching, in addition to the work that we do, we are a teaching hospital. Uh, we have a Canadian top 40 research institute on site, and we are system leading in our partner and our patient-centered care and partnership models. Uh, we're also very proud to be one of Greater Toronto top employers for the last decade, and Canada's top employers for young people for the last nine years. The next slide provides a bit of a Holland Bloor view uh, by the numbers. So every year we serve over 8,000 clients with about 53,000 outpatient visits and more than 400 inpatient stays. Uh, kids and youth that we see in, at Holland Bloorview have over 2,000 unique diagnoses, and some of the more common ones being cerebral palsy, acquired brain injuries, and autism. Um, over the last few years, like I'm sure uh, this will be um, familiar to healthcare colleagues, over the last several years, we are seeing clients with more complex um, and increased medical needs, um, including, including uh, clients who, who need more mental health support. Uh, there has been an increased trend in younger patients and patients with mental health needs, as I just mentioned. Uh, this includes suicidal ideation and self-harm behaviors. And we're also seeing more marginalized youth, so uh, youth who identify in the LGBTQ community and um, who may be homeless. Now, I'm sure some of you on the line may be wondering why a hospital decided to get into uh, social advocacy and where the Dear Everybody campaign came from. Um, and really, it was something that was born out of our uh, out of our social our, out of our strategic plan called No Boundaries, uh, which was launched in 2017. And I'm just going to rewind a bit um, to develop that plan. Holland Bloorview conducted. Um, a number of touch points with families, youth, with families, some of our clients, our staff, and other healthcare sectors that included over thousands of touch points to, to a thousand touch points and different conversations to determine what we were going to include in this strategic plan. And one of the things that, that came out was that Holland Bloorview played a role in leading and modeling social change. Uh, what we heard in those conversations was that to really provide care for the kids and youth that we see uh, within our walls, we needed to think about their lives beyond our walls and some of the injustices and inequity that they face. Um, and we, and through that, we decided that we had a role to play um, in uh, removing some of those barriers and to drive social social justice for children and youth with disabilities. So, dear everybody, is a five-year campaign designed to challenge and help end stigma towards kids and youth with disabilities, like Olivia mentioned. And with this campaign, we want to change hearts and minds about disability, and more importantly, get people to take action to create a more inclusive and equitable society. So, dear everybody, is a national movement, and currently we're in year three. Good morning. The fire panel is temporarily bypassed to allow for construction work. If you detect smoke or fire, please call the Sorry about that. Our panel is temporarily bypassed to allow for construction work. If you detect smoke or fire, please call 5555 and stay location. Well, now you know we are at a hospital indeed. Uh, so as I mentioned, dear, everybody is a national movement. And right now we're in our year three, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, before we go into... Um, Dear, you know, what Dear Everybody looks like in action. I just wanted to go over some of the development of the campaign. Um, so uh, it was really important to us when we started developing the campaign uh, over three years ago that our clients and families shaped what it looked like and to really make sure that it reflected their needs and wants and also make sure that, that it was authentic uh, to what they wanted it to achieve. 
Um, so to do that, we put together an advisory committee with clients, families, and staff. And our first order of business was to come up with some foundation statements about what we wanted the campaign to accomplish. Um, and this is what they this is what they told us. They wanted the campaign to change social attitudes and behaviors around childhood disability and create a society where all kids and youth with disabilities belong. Um, and to do that, we used a think, feel, do framework, uh, which if there are any marketing colleagues online, you'll be familiar with. Um, we wanted we wanted clients and or clients and families wanted people to think about and to know that that exclusion and stigma profoundly hurt kids with disabilities. They wanted them to feel the injustice in this and that they can change it. And also in terms and, and also they wanted the an action item. They wanted people to do something about it. And through that, we were able to um, create the, the Dear Everybody uh, campaign. So the families that participated in the creation of the campaign have incredibly diverse experiences. But something that they shared in common is the misconception that exists around disability in society. So some of these misconceptions are disability is inspirational or tragic. So this is the idea that someone who has a disability is automatically or inherently inspirational just because of the disability. And essentially says, says that having a disability is so difficult that by simply living, one is overcoming something. And actually an Australian disability rights activist, Stella Young, coined the term inspiration porn to describe this. Uh, relatedly, viewing disability as inherently tragic paints disability as a burden and as something that is shameful, which of course it's not. Another misconception is people with disabilities have less valuable lives. So this is the misconception that people with disabilities have less value in society because unfortunately society often puts so much pressure and value on what people do intellectually and physically. We have often such a narrow definition of success. And also people with disabilities automatically have, quali have lower quality of life beca because of that. So that is a huge misconception that we've come across. Another one is people with disabilities are helpless. So this could lead, of course, to further marginalizing people and treating teenagers like their kids, treating kids like their babies. Another one is accommodations are favors. So the misconception that people with disabilities receive some kind of unfair advantage when their needs are accommodated. And the flip side of this is that accommodations put a burden on other people. For example, employers have this misconception sometimes. Another one is people with disabilities can't speak for themselves. And this is the idea that people without disabilities assume they know what people with disabilities need or want without often even asking. And lastly, not all disabilities are seen as equal. The idea that some disabilities are perceived as better or worse than others. And these misconceptions have very real consequences faced every day by children and youth with disabilities. So in Canada, there are at least 400,000 children and youth with disabilities. And young people with disabilities routinely face the consequences of stigma, uh, such as staring, whispers, name calling, social exclusion, bullying, and outright discrimination. And here on the slides, you see you can see uh, some statistics that tell quite a harsh reality. So going by the numbers, according to one study, 53% of kids with disabilities have zero or only one close friend. They're also two to three times more likely to be bullied than their peers without disabilities which is quite a high statistic already. Youth with disabilities face lower employment rates, higher poverty rates, and other, as you will see, other statistics here that are quite frustrating. So with that in mind, we really wanted to make sure that our Dear Everybody campaign puts our kids and youth at the forefront. So in the first two years of the campaign, we used the words and images of children and youth with disabilities to challenge stigma. So as you can see on the left, in our year one creatives, kids and youth were our copywriters. So taking ownership of the words in an open letter to everybody. 
about what they wanted people to know about disability and themselves. And these statements are directly from kids and youth with disabilities and they're quite witty. So some of them are not everyone in a wheelchair needs to be fixed or if someone communicates differently than you still say hi. In year two, the kids were our art directors taking control of the images, their images. So as you can see on the right, they told us how to see them, to not to not just look at the disability, but to see them to see them as they want to be defined and seen. So as an inventor, an athlete, a storyteller. Um, this is what Dear Everybody looks like in action. So this comes to life every year in September, um, you know, aligned with the beginning of school. This is a great time for us to have those um, th these messages out, especially around anti-bullying. Um, so we, um, so yeah, this is what the the campaign looks like in action, and we do create quite a lot of resources and collateral um, to help spread the campaign. Uh, central to this, and in the, in the middle of the slide, is the Dear Everybody position paper, and uh, that was a, that was a that was created in our first year, and it includes uh, you know a number of research, including uh, research uh, developed here at Hall and Bloorview and, and from elsewhere around the world, uh, stories of lived experience from our youth. Um, and it also includes a number of resources and tip sheets on how to be an ally uh, for different audiences, such as educators, employers, healthcare professionals, and the media, um, just to help them become more comfortable um, interacting with people with disabilities. Uh, since we are a children's hospital, we wanted the campaign to be uh, children friendly as well. So we've developed um, coloring pages and books. Uh, we have on our website, dearEverybody.ca, we have uh, we have book recommendations for all ages, blog lists, and other information about ableist language. Uh, from a communication standpoint, it is an all hands on deck for our communication and public engagement team, uh, where we use Dear Everybody campaign, obviously, um, to reach out to, our, our, to all of our stakeholders. Um, the public is obviously the main audience for this one, so we, we, um, we employ social media. We also have um, ad campaigns posted all over Toronto, radio ads um, in Ontario, um, we we are all, we also use the opportunity and the information from our dear everybody position paper to reach out to our government stakeholders um, to help shape shape and policy and decision making processes. Um, and then more recently, we've also started uh, taking this information into schools, which Paulina will uh, get to shortly. Um, so this is a creative from our third year of the campaign, which we are in the middle of now. Um, so in the first two years of the campaign, as you've just seen, it was really it was really more educational and set the grounds for this year's greater call to action. Um, in this year's campaign, we are drawing attention to the lack of representation of people with disabilities in our visual landscape. Um, so I just wanted to to take a moment and and have your, and and think about you know last night when you went home and turned on Netflix or if you were flipping through a magazine or even online browsing you know, browsing browsing the internet and came across different ads. Um, it isn't very often that we come across advertising advertisement campaigns um, that include people with 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 various disabilities. Um, and the fact that the fact is that about twenty two percent of Canadians live with a disability. Uh, but this is this is uh, you know this isn't accurately represented in the images that we see every day. And the idea behind the creative concept this year is to demonstrate that images like this, uh, don't exist or are extremely rare. Um, so again, in this year's campaign, we are challenging consumers to think about what the media landscape could be like if it included images that accurately represented our population. And that this was a really great evolution, or at least we feel it was a great evolution of this year's campaign because the fact is um, conversations about representation are having are happening all the time. I'm sure some of you will be very familiar with conversations around um, gender representation and racialized representation. Uh, but what we heard from our clients and families was that uh, people with disabilities weren't being um, weren't being included in those conversations, and that's what we were trying to achieve with this year's campaign. Uh, so now we're just gonna I'm gonna take a pause, and we're going to flip to the video ad that was created for this year's campaign. Just. Um, getting it set up here, it'll take us about five seconds.
you. Um, so quite a so quite a powerful um, advertisement created for this year's campaign. We do have a video ad for every year, um, and in the spirit of authenticity, we did have uh, kids and youth, some of our client ambassadors, do the voiceover of this year's campaign. Um, so in addition to the ads that we created, uh, we really wanted to have a stronger call for action for Canadians. So this year, in addition to the ads that we created, uh, we also have the Dear Everybody Agreement, which is available on DearEverybody.ca, and we're asking Canadians to to to, to you know sign sign their names to show their support for a more inclusive visual landscape. And by doing so, is basically a promise to uh, not only support the cause but also to support companies or brands who do make more of an effort to be more inclusive in their marketing in their marketing materials. Uh, we've been quite successful to date. We've collected over 7,000 signatures. Uh, and uh, it, our Dear Everybody agreement is, uh, continues to be live on our website. So I encourage everyone today, if you haven't already done so, to head over to our website and include your name to show your support for the campaign. Uh, but we knew that uh, having having Canadians sign uh, sign this petition or the pledge wasn't going to be enough to truly influence the market. So in addition to the Dear Everybody agreement for Canadians, we've also created the Dear Brands agreement. Um, which is, a, which is a formal document that, that we've taken um, around Toronto and to a number of big organizations and companies uh, to, to pledge their, their commitment to being more diverse and including people with disabilities in their advertising campaigns. And again, we've been quite successful and conversation is ongoing. Uh, we have a number of organizations, quite big ones like Toyota, Scotiabank, the Globe and Mail, BMO signed the pledge. And we've also go, gone out to the industry uh, to raise awareness about our campaign and the likes and vendors such as Actra Toronto, Man Casting, and a number of other casting agencies and different uh, marketing organizations have also signed the agreement, um, which we think will be very, which we think will be really helpful in uh, driving our, our mission forward. Um, and lastly, we're going to show, um, or not lastly, but we will show another video uh, of one of our clients uh, who talked about his experience as an aspiring actor and what that means with him uh, trying to pierce the market as someone with a disability. We are buffering, buffering. We'll give us one a uh, few seconds and we should be up and running. Thank you. So shifting gears a little bit uh, to something new that we've launched with this year's campaign and something that I think is incredibly relevant to today's theme of Pink Shirt Day. So in the first two years of Dear Everybody, we've heard from a lot of parents and educators who were interested in bringing disability awareness and understanding into their kids' classrooms. So this year, we built up capacity via my role as the outreach coordinator to bring Dear Everybody into the community and especially schools. And we've done this because the research shows that shaping positive attitudes towards people with disabilities early on is critical. In other words, it's important to reach kids when they're young. So with that in mind, in September 2019, we launched our Dear Everybody Schools Outreach Program. And the program is a one hour interactive presentation for students focused on 
promoting awareness of disability stigma and enhancing social inclusion. And the presentation, I think the really secret ingredient to the success of the presentations have been the fact that it's delivered by young adults with lived experience with disability, such as myself. And the presentation is more of a conversation than a lesson. So through the presentation, kids may be uh, it, for the first time exposed to people with disability, and we really hope to uh, increase their comfort and understanding of disability. As of today, we've visited about nine schools, and uh, 5,000 students have been reached through these presentations. We've gone to the Toronto District School Board, the Toronto Catholic School Board, uh, the York Region School Board, and many more to come. So I think we have about 20 presentations booked for the months of March and April. And here we have some of the reviews we've received from the community. And the reviews have been overwhelmingly positive, we found, from both students and staff, with many educators and parents sharing that the program has been incredibly helpful and they've been sharing with their peers across other schools, which to me is a great metric of success. And I should mention that at some schools, youth or parents of youth asked to be a part of the presentation to share their lived experience with disability with their peers, which has been incredibly impactful and really gave a voice to kids who aren't always heard. And often we're asked to come in during times such as Anti-Bullying Week, World Health Day, and International Day of Pink, Pink Shirt Day, which is today, and other initiatives that promote that awareness and inclusion. So now that you're experts on the Dear Everybody campaign and its many elements, we'd like to share some key takeaways that we've learned over the course of the campaign. And in the creation of the campaign, our clients and families shared a lot of ways to mitigate the neg negative impacts of stigma. And here are a few mitigation strategies that as individuals we all can use. So challenge the assumption that young people with disabilities lead less fulfilling lives. Respect how each individual chooses to describe themselves. For example, uh, some people choose person with autism, others may go by autistic person. Stop using hurtful and ableist language that implies disability is negative. So words like afflicted, confined, crazy are all words that can be incredibly hurtful. Self-reflect on your own views about disability and acknowledge biases, and I think we could all work on that. Uh, don't ignore someone with a disability because you're afraid to say the wrong thing. And got a question for someone with a disability, ask them, not the person with them. And that came, that last one came straight from our Dear Everybody Here One campaign. So it came from one of the kids. And of course, we also want to share uh, key takeaways for different sectors. And especially for those of you in the healthcare leadership roles. So the first one is ensure decision making includes disability. So we ask that policy makers, health policy makers and policy makers in general, consider the needs and wants of children and youth with disabilities in any decision making, conversation or activity that impacts children and youth. And children and youth with disabilities and their families should also participate meaning, meaningfully in the development and decision-making processes. Another one is embed disability awareness in healthcare. And of course, we're doing that today with uh, webinars like with a webinar like this. So ensuring that healthcare employees have thorough training in disability issues like stigma and health equity to ensure that people with disabilities receive the qu highest quality of care. And of course, again, it's so imperative that clients and families participate and the development of these trainings and resources. Another one is harness disability and employment. So employers large and small can and should actively recruit youth and adults with dis disabilities and seek support from employment agencies about what the best practices are for hiring and creative those inclusive workspaces. And I know we've touched on this already, so making disability part of education, and that's something we're doing from our end. And we also encourage the education sector to ensure that every teacher and aspiring teacher has thorough mand mandatory training in disability issues. And again, children and youth 
should be involved in these developments and trainings. So a lot of uh, what we've mentioned is available on our website at deareverybody.ca and we encourage you to visit the, the, web, the website and look at our resources that include various tip sheets with recommendations for parents, teachers, employers, healthcare providers, and others, all of which can be then used to take action and end the stigma. And of course, there are a lot of ways that you can become uh, involved in the immediate to near future. Firstly, of course, is going to DearEverybody.ca to show your support by signing the Dear Everybody Agreement. And then, of course, to sharing it across your social platforms and encourage your friends and your professional network to do the same. Um, if you're in the Toronto area or in Ontario, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us and bring the Dear Everybody Anti-Stigma presentation to your school and community. We're always looking for new opportunities. And that goes beyond schools as well. We'll, we'll be presenting at a brownie group in the near future and different um, employers are bringing us in as well. Um, and and you know, we, again, we encourage everyone to visit dearevidia.ca to check out our resources and I'm sure there'll be some important learnings and maybe some aha moments for you about uh, disability and um, challenging disability stigma in your own life. So we'll now we'll take a look to see if there are any questions. And we want to open up the floor for discussion if you have questions, comments. So there's a question that says, is out the out we outreach workshop available for other hospital or rehab centers to present? Um, I think, I think um, I, if I understand the question correctly, we are definitely open to visiting other hospitals to bring our message and our workshop, um, you know, to, to your hospital. Um, and if you're, you know, outside of the province, we could look at sharing some of our materials and maybe, you know, doing our own uh, webinar um, for, for your staff members. I hope I answered that correctly. And that right now is the list of questions. I wonder, has there been any discussion about um, taking the campaign um, beyond Toronto and Ontario? Uh, well, certainly uh, the campaign throughout the month of September runs, uh, you know, we do call it a national campaign. We have received a lot of media coverage uh, in some of our national out outlets. Most of it does, uh, does um, you know, is kind of centralized to Ontario, but we're always looking for opportunities to spread that. Um, so if anyone on the line is interested in helping spread our campaign, especially as we get ready for year four and we do start preparing, you know, in the early months of the year, uh, we're happy to have those discussions and figure out a way to best bring uh, the messages of Dear Everybody and the Dear Everybody campaign um, to other areas in the country for sure. Wonderful. Uh, another comment, um, I think it is important to make distinctions between childhood disability and adulthood. We need to make others understand the implications of early stigma. Do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, definitely. The need, of course, we recognize at our hospital that the needs of children and youth with disabilities are different from those uh, in the adult population. And we try to tailor our services at our hospital to accommodate those needs. Um, and one of the one of the unique things that, ha that Holland Bloorview is doing right now is that we do have an active transition strategy. So we do have people at the hospital who are who work um, you know, every day to try to bridge some of the um, access to care for kids when they trans from when they turn 18 and transition into the adult system. Uh, but certainly, um, you know, the messages of dear everybody, I think, are, are you know, although you know, for us at Holland Bloorview, they're focused on kids and youth, but they're certainly um, resonate with um, the older disability community as well. Are there any other questions or comments? I was chatting away. I'm on mute. Um, uh, the question was, can you do the presentation in uh, French or in other languages as well? Uh, so right now, uh, the presentation is being delivered in uh, English only. We do have some French capability at Holland Floorview, but we would need uh, some time to translate the materials if, if there was an interest by uh, Francophone community. 
Wonderful. Um, a question about, have you evaluated the impact of the program? And if so, what are the results? So that's the next step of the evolution of, if you mean the outreach program, yes. Yeah, so that's kind of our next step. Uh, this year we have been building it and uh, test running it in schools and then just getting informal feedback from educators, parents, students. And then going forward, we are building evaluation surveys and um, other materials that will help us evaluate. So it is, it is on our radar for sure. And we're looking at Holland Blurview. We do have the Blurview Research Institute on site with a, you know, a number of researchers and scientists to help us make sure that uh, the metrics that we do build are you know, credible and, and relevant to what we're trying to achieve. Um, a question about whether you see a difference between social stigma uh, with, between folks with physical disabilities and those with invisible ones. From our conversations and from my lived experience as someone with an invisible disability, uh, the stigmas are often different. So I can speak for myself when I say it's more, a lot of the time it's more uh, the fear of not being believed. And a lot of the time people don't um, believe people with invisible disabilities when they're asking for accommodations or uh, as some kind of support because their disability isn't seen. Whereas for people with physical disabilities, it can often be around making assumptions about what they can or can't do based on their appearance. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, a question, can you elaborate more on the campaign's efforts to bring the discussion and education on disability to the educational setting? How does the campaign go about providing this education? So I think that I think the most overt way is through our Dear Everybody uh, outreach program that Paulina is the coordinator of. So um, in the last year, we've been actively going out to schools and del delivering um, assembly style and sometimes classroom presentations about disability stigma. Um, the messages of the campaign are really rooted in our Dear Everybody um, in our Dear Everybody messaging, and we have uh, ki we have um, youth with lived experience, so youth with both invisible and visible disability, uh, doing these presentations to help raise awareness about both invisible and invisible disability stigma, and really the the overarching message of our presentation is of course kindness and the, you know more alike than different. Um, and then of course with our Dear Everybody position paper, we do have a number of resources. Uh, for educators to help them um, to help them learn um, and to find ways of having a more inclusive classroom and accommodating kids with special needs. Thanks, Paulina. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's the end of our questions. I'm just going to give folks a, a chance to type any last minute ones in. Um, Thank you so much for the, the presentation while we're uh, waiting for any uh, additional questions to come in. I think it's a really fabulous campaign that's much needed. Um, I'm delighted to see that you're moving into the advertising world and, and uh, helping to try and influence at that end as well. Um, have you had uptake from that, the list of corporate uh, clients that you've, or corporate partners that you've partnered with? Have you seen any uh, results of your attempt to um, influence their decision making? Yeah, we have actually um, every once in a while and actually last night was another example. We um, they actually send us their casting calls for uh, you know kids and youth and sometimes adults with disabilities. So they 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 turn to us to help them fill those roles and spread awareness when they become available. Uh, so certainly, you know, we don't get them every day, but, um, you know, I think it's a start and people um, are taking their commitment of the Dear Everybody Agreement uh, seriously and they're, you know, they're moved to make the change. Wonderful. A couple of additional questions that have come in. How do you ensure the materials that you provide to educators are implemented? I guess that's part of your evaluation questions to see who does what with what you share with them. Right. Well, a lot like so the resources that exist on our dear everybody.ca website um, are, you know, voluntary and we don't have uh, the, the power to ensure that they're implemented. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, we will be developing, um, we will be developing um, 
uh, metrics and more formal um, evaluation of our Dear Everybody Outreach program specifically um, to, you know, to make, to, you know, to, to evaluate whether or not these conversations are are continuing in the classroom. And certainly since our, since the program launched in, in September, it's kind of been a slow or not, actually, not a slow, but it's been an evolution and we're constantly creating uh, new materials uh, for classrooms. And one of them that we're working on right now um, is, is a tip sheet and a, uh, for directly for educators that'll include discussion questions so that they can keep these conversations going um, in their classrooms. And we, oh, sorry, just to add to that, we've had a lot of uh, positive feedback from educators, so teachers, principals, who are very excited about continuing these conversations and uh, getting more resources, as well as having us coming in for a second talk or coming in next year. So uh, it's clear that the enthusiasm is there on the side of the education sector, which to us is a very good sign. So to me, that's a great indicator that they are following through uh, post-presentation. Oh, great. Um, get, building on the success that you've had with the education sector, have you considered moving into the recreation sector, March camp breaks, uh, camps, uh, summer camps, those kinds of services? That's a really good question. Um, certainly the evolution of the campaign has always been um, advised by our, our client and family advisors. Um, for, for year four, we are looking at continuing the conversation in the media industry, but we will be having these conversations uh, with, um, you know, our, we have a very engaged family, we have very engaged family leaders at Holland Bloorview um, to see where else we may want to target our efforts um, in future campaigns. But I think that, I, but I think that's a really, a really good, good one as well. Another question uh, relates to if those with disabilities are at greater risk of being bullied and victimized, what steps are being taken to increase police or EMS awareness? Uh, that's a, another really great question. Um, that's not something that we've uh, tapped into at the moment and not something that I'm an expert or can really provide uh, context for, but I think there's definitely a need for some education and awareness, um, you know, on disability issues and even, uh, you know, how to um, respectfully have interactions with people with disabilities. I know, you know, I'm only drawing on what I've seen from TV, but, you know, it's, it's certainly there's, um, you know, opportunities for improvement there, um, and you know, there's a lack of awareness about how to how to maybe you know interact respectfully with certain people with disabilities when you're not when you're not familiar with uh, certain diagnoses. Wonderful. Um, there's uh, several requests for a link to the videos. With your permission, are we able to uh, share that um, and post it on our uh, Knowledge Exchange Network for Absolutely. folks to view? Yeah, absolutely. All of the videos are located on YouTube. So Holland Bloorview has a YouTube channel where we're constantly um, um, putting out new material and you can find all of the Dear, the Dear Everybody um, videos there as well. Wonderful. The last question that's here, I think relates back to your plans around evaluation and um, kind of a pre post uh, to assess any changes in perception or acceptance of disabilities for, before or after their exposure to this campaign efforts. Have you done any pre-post? So we haven't done it yet, but we've been in discussion with some of our researchers in the Bloorview uh, Institute about doing that as well. So assessing uh, changes in attitudes as well as changes in behavior. So that is something that we're uh, discussing. And uh, part of it is also we're uh, in the process of uh, signing our agreement with the TDSB to be official partners. So once that's established, uh, it'll be easier for us to implement those measures. And the outside of the, outside of the outreach program, uh, we certainly, um, outside of the outreach program, before this year's campaign, we did a, a national omnibus survey uh, to, to actually determine whether or not uh, Canadians were seeing uh, disabilities uh, represented in the, in the media to help sort of um, build some of some of our messaging and I think you know as we progress through uh, year four and eventually year five we can we can reevaluate and maybe bring it bring out another um, omnibus survey to, to see whether or not we've had some impact. 
It's delightful to see that this is a long-term initiative, um, that you're now talking year four, five, and beyond. Uh, that is a great, uh, um, I think it's a great contribution to, to uh, anti-stigma. Yeah, um, so, so Dear Everybody itself uh, is a five-year commitment for Holland Bloorview, um, and we will be, of course, um, you know, uh, meeting with our with our clients and our family advisors to determine the um, the future of Dear Everybody, kind of I guess closer to year five. But we do still have we have two we have you know committed to two more years, um, so we're very excited about that. Oh, wonderful! Uh, a question about whether there are lesson plans uh, developed that link to the curriculum for teachers. That's not something that we've been doing at this stage. So um, we do provide follow-up resources such as discussion questions for teachers, uh, which are kind of like lessons, lesson plans. And then we share our resources from Dear Everybody website. So uh, the tip sheets for uh, how to make sure they have an inclusive classroom and things like that. So th that's, those are the resources we are currently using. Great. Um, an, another comment and follow-up question. Uh, in the statistics slide that me mentions that 25% of students don't receive the proper support, could you share the reference and or provide your insights as to why this resort is uh, not received as required? Um, so all of the statistics from that slide are from our Dear Everybody position paper. Um, I don't have a copy of it in front of me right now, so I'm not sure where um, it's referenced from, but we, there is a, a, a reference page at the end of that paper. So if you go to dearabity.ca, you can, you can find that. Um, I can't speak with any, um, you know, I don't, I don't have an ex, you know, I'm not an expert on the education uh, system. I am a, a communicator by, by profession. Uh, but I can only make, you know, educated guesses that right now there is a lack of formal training for most educators. Um, and as we are seeing, you know, a number, of, an increase in the number of kids with disabilities in the education system, um, educators may not always feel, uh, you know, prepared to, to provide them with the resources that they need. And certainly with growing class sizes and, you know, in certain provinces, in certain, uh, certain provinces, it, you know, it makes it more challenging. Of course. Well, that's the end of the questions we have. Um, thank you so much, Olivia and Paulina, for a very great um, presentation. Thank you uh, so much for having us. It was a pleasure to, uh, to be a part of this discussion today. It's great to have you as partners. Thanks. Children's Healthcare Canada hosts our Spark Live webinars every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's always great if you can watch live and comments enrich the discussion greatly. But if you can't watch live, the recordings of these sessions are made available after the fact on the CAN. Um, we'll also put uh, links to the videos as well as uh, the position paper on the CAN as well. We're excited about the next uh, webinar that's coming up on March 4th when you'll hear from Rachel Ferrier and Leslie Colvin James of Alberta's Children's Hospital on rare diseases and the impact of the new genomic era of practice. One in 12 Canadians has a rare disease and two thirds of those with rare diseases are children. Traditionally, many families with rare diseases face a confusing and compl complicated diagnostic odyssey and recent advances in genomic knowledge and technology are reducing that odyssey for many families. A rare disease diagnosis can permit access to community supports, government funding, emergency, sorry, emerging precision therapies and emerging research. So stay tuned for March 4th, uh, register, uh, registration is now open. If you haven't already done so, please sign up for our Children's Healthcare Canada Spark newsletter to stay up to date on all of our activities and events. Thanks again for joining us today and thanks for Children's Healthcare Canada member Holland Bjorview, Bjorview for supporting our webinar program and hopefully we'll see many of you back here next week. Bye-bye everyone. <laughs>